Alright, we're over at Buddy Mike's here and uh, he's going to cut our crank down for the Tecumseh. You know, because with his big lathe, he's only got to take down this, this little uh, bit here. With his big lathe, he, he could do this in five minutes where it would take me an hour or so of my little lathe. And he's uh, going to cut the keyway and, uh, and we'll be done with it. So. Like I say, if what he can do in, in 10, 15 minutes, it would take me an hour or so with my little lathe. I think he's changing over. He's, he had a three, three jaw chuck, and he, uh, he's going to put a four, four jaw chuck in there now. Yeah, I'll put the four jaw on, only because that three, we're not going to grip it between centers because I don't have a center made up. Right. So we're going to put the four jaw on it. Just clamp it on the one bearing surface and then just get it indicated pretty straight and use the center on the on the other end. Okay. Alright, got the crank in there and we're all chucked up and the uh, mic is just getting a mic. How's it look? Oh, it looks great. Yeah. It'll look better once you cut it. Alright, so we've got to take 62 thou off of it. Alright. So, let's uh, so see, Mike's got the mic. Yeah. Right, because that, that step is 687 thou off. Boy, that crank looks tiny in that machine. Yeah. It's funny, yeah. if it was in my machine, it would look big. <laughs> Alright, let me get out of his way. It should turn nicely. Off and see how it, see how it comes out. See how it cuts. Yeah. See what the finish is like. And we got a keyway there, so it's going to be interrupted. Yeah. Awesome. Well, maybe make make a tiny chatter, but that's about it. I'm curious to see what the surface finish looks like at this uh, feed rate. I have a little radius on that tool, so I could probably, I could probably stand to be touched up. But I don't yeah. think it's that bad. Nah, it's only gonna hold the clutch. Yeah. Yeah, it's not like it's a bearing journal. Man, that looks like it looks like like cast iron. It's cutting like cast iron. Finish is excellent. It definitely feels like cast iron. Wow. Let's see what it come. Let's see what it, what it's at right now. Just get a another measurement on it. Six hundred and fifty. Six hundred and six fifty. Sixty one thousandths. Six sixty one. So the target is six two five. Hmm. So we still got some to take off yet. It is our final cut. It's hardly taking anything off these guys so close. Yeah, we're only taking off like a half, a thou and a half. Yeah. And dust. They call it dust in the business. Yeah, we're just dusting it. <laughs> yeah, I really need to put an indicator on the cross cross feed here. Because the graduations on the, the collar don't seem to be quite accurate. That should be it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, anything else? Take it off the you file. Clean it up. Right. Clean it up with a file if you had to.
Well, that was a nice cut, man. That's smooth. Yeah. yeah. Like, I don't feel any step here. Yeah, now. I don't even see it. So it should be pretty well blended. There you go. I'm sorry, guys. I was looking. I was looking at the machine. I wasn't looking at the viewfinder. I'm gonna hear about that. Look at that. There you go. 625 on the nose. Hmm. That's it. Clean it up, buddy. Put some uh, steel wool or. Oh, you want me to polish it now? Polish it. Yeah. What's that other thing you use? Scotch yeah, Scotch Brite. Don't make it look too good, it's only at the comps, sir. Yeah, right. It's only a scooter. If it was a Briggs, I would make you polish that till it looked like chrome. Yeah. Alright, he's got everything uh, set up in the block here, ready to make a cut. Let me get it out of his way. Yeah, I just want to set the automatic stops. Okay. For the, uh, for the table feed. Alright. Mike already took two passes. This is the third pass. Sounds like a Tommy machine gun. <laughs> it's funny, that cut looks just like it does from the factory. Yeah. That's a 30,000. Got the automatic stops set. This thing should stop by itself. Yeah, it's gonna go a bit farther. I forgot that the Woodruff key is gonna be significantly deeper. Deeper. Yeah. Than the, the straight key. Yeah. Yeah, we put the key weight right, right where the identical uh, Woodruff key was. Mike just finished cleaning it up, wiping it down. How's it feel? Don't cut yourself on it. I know, it looks good. Well, I took a file and I, oh. I broke the edges, so okay. it looks nice. You can see where we went right up to the, the Woodruff key there. Right. So, what's uh, what sprocket go on the inside or the outside? Uh, the teeth go to the inside. Okay. Oh, wow. Seems nice. It did, it snapped right in there. Now look at that. Nice 3 16th stock. Yeah, this, this uh, you know it's a rough stock key, rough, rough yeah. key. You know, how's it, how does it fit? Oh, look at that. it goes in there, but probably have to dress that key. Feels like it hits something. Yeah, well, it almost looks like. Let's see. It goes in there right to the end of like the set screw. So I wonder if there's a burr in the. It could be around there somewhere. Try the other key. Yeah. The key fits in the in the slot just fine. Hmm. What which key? The little one? The little baby, yeah. Oh, that fits right in there. Yeah. Alright, that's good. See now now that 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 shaft that that can uh, that the crankshaft could be used for anything. Before, you know, it had a bastard clutch on it, and that's the only clutch it could went on there, so. Yeah, it was a weird size, huh? Yeah. A couple guys mentioned, you know, make a bushing, but it would have been a pain in the ass to make a bushing for that. We would have had to step it up and uh, make a 11 sixteenths. Well, but you brought, brought right, but the, I've never seen it at 11 sixteenths. No, no, I, I tried, I looked, I seen it. If I, if right. I found another clutch, I would have got it. Right. So, uh, that's the way to go. All right. Yeah, what, what Mike had just done in a half hour would have taken me... All afternoon, so. Thanks a lot, buddy. No worries. All right, now I'm going to take us home and uh, going to start putting this thing back together. All right, we'll see you guys back at home. All right. Yeah, we're back at home. It's the next day, and uh, I spent the day cleaning all this up, degreasing it, and uh, getting it ready to paint. We're just going to throw a, 
a cheap Earl shot paint job on here. It's uh, like I say, this isn't going to be a restoration. This is just going to make it look decent because the rest of the little scooter looks pretty good, you know. And when they painted these back in the day, you know, they they painted it while it was all together, and half of it, like here, that's all aluminum. Half of it was missed. Whatever was cut, whatever was covered, you know, never received any paint at all. So I'm just going to. Uh, knock down most of the rust here, clean it up and treat it, and then uh, prime it, and then we'll paint it, paint it white. Same color it is. So, uh, that way uh, we can put it back together. I cleaned the carburetor up. The carburetor came out nice. You know, and uh, I got a rebuild kit for it, and uh, we're going to try it. We're going to see, uh, you know, everybody says these, uh, these carburetors aren't any good, but uh, who knows, you know. We'll uh, we'll try it, and if it and if it don't work, then uh, I ordered a, a McCuny, you know, off of uh, eBay on on a recommendation of our buddy George, the trade tr the shade tree fix it man, and uh, I think that's what he goes by. If not, we'll uh, we'll correct that. You know, as uh, matter of fact, the. This kit was like ten bucks with shipping and everything like that, and the whole carburetor, the whole McCuny carburetor, is only fourteen dollars. So it probably it probably would run better on that anyway. But we're gonna try that, and if it don't work, we got a backup. So we got uh, Hurricane I to come in tomorrow. It's supposed to uh, rain all day long. They're expecting eight inches or so. So I'll I'm gonna try to get this all painted today. It's supposed to be nice today, and. Uh, have it ready. It'll give me something to do for the next couple days when it's going to be raining. So let's. Uh, I'm going to take it outside, sand it, and uh, get it ready. So I uh, will show you that when we're done. Alright, while that paint's drying, I guess uh, we'll try and put this carburetor together. We'll give it a, a half ass rebuild. Uh, I got a kit here and uh, has some stuff in it, not much, you know. But uh, the main thing we need is this uh, diaphragm. So, you know, a couple guys commented on this carburetor, and uh, some guys said they rebuild them, and some of them say they put the the gasket on the on the bottom of the diaphragm and the other one say on the top and you know and and nobody seemed to know really which way it, it went but uh, I found a book here on the shelf here and it, we got a three three horse so I checked this and I did find that carburetor and uh, what it says here let me see if I can uh, Close up, close in on it here. Right here, the diaphragm and a gasket. So if you read right here, it can go either way, depending on what, what uh, model you have there. So I'll let you guys read that that are interested. And uh, that's a, a small uh, blow up of it. And on the other page here, whoops. Oh boy, oh boy, I lost the page. Bear with me, okay, here, this one's a little bigger. So, uh, I'm going to go by the picture, and right here, they say the header rivet has to hit that the inlet thing, pushes up there. And then, uh, if you see here, the gasket on this one is on the bottom. So that's what we're going to do. And, uh, you know, hey, we'll hope for the best. So, let me throw you up on a tripod and uh, we'll uh, throw this thing together. All right, let me zoom you in here and uh, maybe you can see a little better. Okay, 
turn these around so I can see you. All right. Uh, let's do this together. All right. First, looks like there's a, a Welsh plug plug missing there, so we'll just put that in there. Then Welsh plug just cover little journals here. You know, I took these uh, jets out and looked down in there, and the 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 ports and the, the jets in there were clear, so I'm not going to take that one out. And this one, this one was missing, so we have actually have a couple here. That's actually let's see what we got here. We got the the gasket, the diaphragm, and this this here is a little primer, I think. And that's that little thing there, and it comes with a spring. And then we got these two O-rings. That's that's for the the jet adjustments there. And then uh, this one here, we don't know where that goes. So we're not going to worry about it. And then you got a real tiny. Can you guys see me here? This uh, this tiny one goes inside here. You know that uh, that goes on the end of here. You know it's like a like a float bowl. You know it, it keeps things from leaking. And there is a, a top and a bottom to it. There's no instructions, and I didn't see anything in the book. So I'm assuming that round bevel edge is is going to meet up with the that that little uh, jet there or whatever. So we're going to put the flat side inside, inside here, and hope we're doing it right. And this red gasket looks like it goes on top of here. And, uh, and then you just get a couple other Welsh plugs here. A big Welsh plug on the side here. This one here, this is strange. This is almost. This looks like it's almost falling out. But that that had to be almost factory because I don't think anybody messed with this carburetor. So. Alright, let's get back to this. First thing to do, let's put this Welsh plug in here. And uh, just get that out of the way. Alright, that's all it takes. Now, let's get this out of the way. See, I'll turn it so you guys can see it. I'm going to try and stay out of your way because we're going to have to put this together ourselves. Okay, there's a, there's a spring in there. And uh, I don't see anything else in there, to tell you the truth. Yeah, I guess that just, uh, just holds a spring. I already noticed something different. This spring here is real real soft and it's and it's actually longer than this other one here this one here it's soft but uh, not quite and it's about an eighth of an inch shorter I don't know if that's gonna mess things up oh boy now you did it now you did it Road King oh boy there we go <laughs> oh boy alright so let's see what we got here That goes in like that. Oh yeah, maybe I can see in here. Nah, that's pretty much flat. So I don't know. Could be wrong, but uh, let's put it in there. Let's put it in. Got a little drill, same size, so I can push it all the way down. said this okay this goes in here thusly then we have the spring goes on there and then we have this little red gasket that goes on here alright we should be set we should be good to go Seems to be working. Alright. Alright. You see, that's just a primer. 
and uh, that little spring is working, so uh, we'll call that good. All right, get this out of the way. Now they say this flat, that's the top of the rivet, that's supposed to go thusly, then the gasket. I'm going to put it on like this and put a couple screws in here. Didn't have any screws, so I just found these. And they're actually uh, screws for light switch. You know what I noticed after I cleaned this? I'll show it to you after I put this on. The bottom of it actually says Lawson Power Products, so. I don't know when he stopped using the the name Lawson. Okay. Am I forgetting anything? You guys see anything? See any extra parts other than the ones we, we deliberately left out? All right, let's tighten her up. I'm squaring this gasket up as much as possible. A lot of people said they had trouble with these, uh, these uh, carburetors, you know. I can't see why, you know what I mean. All it does is squirt the uh, fuel into the engine. Alright, no, 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 that, that primes it. That looks like, uh, looks like it. All right, let me see the, let me show you the bottom here. Where you at? Can you see that? There you go. See that? Lawson Power Products. You know, before, the Cumps have bought out Lawson in 1955. And they used the, the name Lawson and Tecumseh, I think up until the 60s. I don't know what exactly what year or what they had left over. It also says Grafton, Wisconsin, so I don't know when they when they're in there or, uh, or moved out of there, so. Alright, I'm going to call this uh, good. It has this plate on here, and this plate, let me get a screwdriver, don't go away. Alright, you guys still there? Yeah, this plate uh, just held the other end of the it was like a box, a heater box. I think we, we uh, established that this was uh, a snow blower. So these screws here, all it did was hold a box. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to uh, fabricate some kind of holder here for a, a little uh, air cleaner. You know, put it on here. I think I have one that goes on like a mini bike, you know, the funny little air filters. I'll see if I can find one and show it to you. But uh, this gasket is shot, but I don't think that gasket m means much because even if you were sucking in air, it wouldn't it wouldn't affect anything. So let me see if I can find that air filter and I'll show you show what we got to do. All right, here's what I got. I got these uh, tiny little little air filters. I got, uh, there's a straight one and here's one with a sort of like a 45 piece of rubber on here. And uh, I was looking for a piece of pipe that I could fabricate there, but I don't, I don't really have anything. So here's what I come up with. It's a little hokey, but it'll work. Come on. I 
hell's going on here? There we go. Oh yeah, yeah, it's only a screw. You know, it makes it tough. I'm trying to keep it over here so you guys can see. And it's not really in front of me to uh, to put it on straight. So uh, right, here's what originally came with it. This this bracket here is actually a, held on what they call a heater box. And I didn't have the heater box. You know, all it is just a, a box. There's no air filter or nothing, you know, because, like I say, it was a snow blower. You don't come across too much dust or snow. So I had this, and this here sort of fits on there. This here has a. hose clamp on there. So that's what I'm thinking. Remember this is only a, a scooter. Some kid's just gonna use it and beat it to death and everything so he's not even gonna care about this. But uh, this is what I come up with. See now that's staying on there nice. I didn't go on anywhere. But you got a gap. You got an air gap right here. And uh, I was thinking maybe just uh, running a bead of silicone on here or actually wrapping it with silicone tape. You know, silicone tape is that, uh, that tape that doesn't stick to anything, but it'll stick to itself. You know, it's used for fixing uh, water leaks on pipes and stuff. So I'm thinking just wrap, wrap uh, silicone tape around there and call it good. You know, just seal it so no dirt comes in. These aren't the best uh, air cleaners anyway, you know, I mean, it's not like a paper filter, you know, it's just pretty much just keep birds out, so, that's what I'm thinking, you know, keep it simple, right, it'd be, it'd be nice if I could make some kind of, uh, bolt some kind of tube on there, but everything is just, is in the way, so, and I don't have, I don't have any uh, tubing or piping around, so, that's where we're at with that. Uh, let me see how much time we got, and then maybe uh, maybe we'll stuff a capa capacitor or something. Alright, I checked the time, and uh, I think it's getting pretty lengthy. It's uh, probably around 28 minutes or so. But uh, let me show you what we'll do, and we'll probably do it in our next video. We uh, established this capacitor was bad. It was uh, 0.70, I believe. It should be 0.22. So uh, I looked, and... Uh, I, I found two uh, Tecumseh capacitors, and they're both good, but they're also, we don't we don't know how old they are. They could be just as old as that one, you know, so it, uh, you may put it in. It may may last a week, may last uh, another 50 years, who knows. But anyway, what I, what I decide I'm going to do is, because uh, they're pretty unique, you know, they, they uh, bolt in and there's a special place for them right on the side of this uh, contraption that they made, you know, and it, it screws in from the side, not like... Uh, you know, most of your other capacitors, you know, you can just put them anywhere. So, uh, what I decided I'm going to do is, I have a brand new capacitor here, 22, uh, 0.22 uh, microfarads. And uh, I was going to stuff it, stuff this one here. And I think it's, I think it's small enough that it might fit inside there. And, uh, you know, it definitely fit in lengthwise. But, uh. I don't know about uh, inside. It looks it looks like it might fit. It looks like we might be able to do it. So uh, that's what we'll do. But we're not going to do it now because uh, I'm tired and I'm hungry. And uh, we gave you your 30 minutes, right? So uh, what do you guys say? Enough of this? All right. See you in the next one. All right. I brought you back here because i got a, a very important uh, addendum here at the end here. You know, I had a 50-50 chance of uh, getting this right, and uh, I got it wrong. And I want to thank uh, Patrick Fagan. He left me a, a, a nice detailed comment. And you can tell he knew what he was talking about because he had the, the old books and everything. And uh, 
he told me he he don't even he didn't even see this video yet. This video isn't put up. You know, he just said to make sure you put it on right. And then he he mentioned that uh, Tarrell had a, a a good video on this. And uh, there's two ways of this uh, to go on. You know, depending on your carburetor. And uh, you have to check right here in the front. There would have been an F. If it had an F. I would have been correct, but I have no, right here there's no F, so that means that this gasket would go on first, and I had it right, I had it the correct way, and then, then the diaphragm, and then the bottom, and that's how that would go on. Yeah, not only does Harold have a good video on this, uh, Donny Boy uh, 69, or I don't know what the hell he is, 73. Donny Boy 73 had a good uh, video on that. But also, I, I plugged this up, and, and from looking at the, everybody else's carburetor, this this was open. And that sort of makes sense because that fuel's got to go somewhere. And right now, the way I have it, it uh, it's not going anywhere. So it's, uh, first off, let's get this out of here. Let's see if I can get this out while you're watching. So that's it, and uh, you know I was looking on the internet, and I also I, I found the the sheet of paper that actually tells you that. And uh, let me take a little clip of that, and you guys could see what I'm what I'm talking about. All right, yeah, this is a, a shot on my computer here, so uh, I don't know how it's going to show up on video, but uh, this is the gasket, and this is the instructions on how to do it on uh, both different ways. And I'll zoom in. I'll walk in on it. And you can read for yourself the instructions. And then in a picture, they, they show you where that F would be. And the one on the left there, that's the carburetor I'm working on, the one on the left. So so there you go. Pause that and read it. All right, so let's put this together the right way. You know, I could have deleted that and just put this part. But, uh, you know, sometimes it's better to see how, how something is done wrong so you, you know and uh, you never make that mistake again. I know I won't. So let's stick this back on there. Also, uh, Patrick checked the, the numbers for that for me and says that was this this uh, engine, you know, he checked the serial numbers and the engine itself dates till uh, the 309th day of 1974. And uh, that's pretty much what I was guessing because remember that's you, I, I seen the four and I said it's got to be an 80, 84 or seventy four or sixty four and eighty four they had uh, solid state ignition you know they didn't have the points there we go so my guess at seventy four was was correct. Because I remember that's how uh, Tecumseh did it. And then at the 309th day is what them numbers were. You know, the serial number, I think it was, it was 4309, 4309. And that all pans out. Okay, let me put this back on. And I'll turn this back on. All right. Yeah, I got the bottom on. And while I got these with me, I figure uh, I might as well take these, uh, these O-rings out of the side here you know and I didn't do it on camera because I knew it was going to be tough here they are right here the ones that came out oh let me try and get you back in let me pull you, pull you back a little bit alright and they're they're almost like uh, <clears throat> hard hard tar you know it's a real hard plastic I knew it was going to be tough to get them out I had to pick them out with these uh, little picks you know it took me about 20 minutes to get them both out but uh, anyway when you put these o-rings back in you know, you, you put the O-ring in, and then it's got a, you put your spring on a, the needle valve here, and it's got a little, I don't know, brass, copper, I would think it's maybe brass, and that goes up against the, the O-ring, push it down. And then, I made a note of, uh, how many turns this, these were in before I took them out and 
I turned it all the way in, and then it was one and a quarter turn. So that's that's the way it was. You know, usually I I put both of them in, you know, about one and a half turn. It's funny the the choke side up here. Put a little uh, O ring in. And that brass washer. And this one up here was three quarters. So I don't know. You know, once it once the engine's running and everything, you can uh, get it running right. So we're just gonna go with uh, three quarters. Like I said, that's what the way it was at. So all right. So that's it. And uh, I want to thank. Uh, Patrick Fagan again for uh, helping me out and straightening me out here. Like I say, he didn't he didn't even know I put this together, but uh, he brought it up. His his comments in, in the last video about these uh, this engine, if you want to read that. And uh, thanks to Terrell and uh, Danny Boy uh, seventy three for making uh, great videos. You know, them guys have been doing it a long time, and they're in the business and, and they know what's going on. So, uh, all right, see you guys in the next one.